everyone welcome back to this next session on anubo learning series our today's topic will be virtual data modeling in s4 hana so what is vdm virtual data models and why we also call vdm concept as cds vdm creation in s4 so let's try to understand what is virtual data model so virtual data model is nothing but it's a representation of data in s4 hana system this concept was actually taken from hana live project where we used to represent a structured data representation of the database views in hana in form of vdm what is the main advantage of vdm and why do we use them so let's discuss about vdm modeling in hana so the very first advantage which vdm gives you is standardization because you are going to use in uh, uh, cds views in s4 to consume all the data to develop your user experiences to develop your analytics also to utilize the apis exposed out of s4 system to integrate with other solutions so that is the time when you would want some kind of standardized interface so that you can communicate to the to the s4 system the first biggest advantage which dvdm gives is standardization the second thing it it fixes the contract for communication <clears throat> so that you know that this will be the structure of my data this will be the contract i need to talk to and that contract remains fixed more or less uh, so in future if i i will remain isolated from the changes which are happening in underlying digital code that is a second advantage which vdm offers you it also allows us streamline our development because the development cannot be in a random way let's say one developer is developing in one style another developer is developing in another style and now their pieces doesn't fit together or for an instance you have a team of 10 people who are developing a lot of cds views and suddenly out of those 10 five people resigns and now i have no clue how to handle all the work because they all have their own strategy of developing own way of development but i don't have a clue how to manage myself or how to read what they have written so it allows you to streamline our development <clears throat> so these are all some of the advantages it follows uh, it keeps your keeps your custom development so every, every time you want to build custom cds views it keeps your custom cds development line with standard so this if you learn the vdm technique virtual data modeling with cds you can design your custom development in a way that it matches with the standards of what sap delivers so actually this is about the benefits but now how actually you realize the vdm so whenever you look at any standard cds views the pattern you would easily be able to also visualize how the vdm is all about so basically uh, to give the vdm and again it's only relevant for s4 hana systems so if you're working on sap s4 hana then it's more relevant for you if you're working on suite on hana or any other ecc system and creating cds views then probably this doesn't really help you much so first annotation which is called vdm annotation dot v type this is what we use to actually identify the type of vdm which is attaching to the view and there are basically uh, three major types which you use is a basic type of view then we have a, something called a composite and then finally we have consumption so ever you develop uh, cds views in s4 hana make sure that you always use vdm annotation and also categorize your views properly and also develop with the same style of vdm so the bottom of the hierarchy of VDM, first we start always with the basic views. These are all the views which are responsible for exposing the master data and also uh, the points between the master data. Typically, these views are always called interface views also, and they are mainly deals with master data. They always start with I underscore, and then you can have your business object name. So just to show you some example, in our S4 system for these views, there are views related to material, views related to cost center, 
And let me just quickly go to our ASCO system and how we can search for these views. You can just do Control Shift E as a shortcut and then search for A underscore, for example, material. Yeah. So I just search for material or I underscore uh, sales order or sorry, I underscore cost center, I underscore uh, shipping location. You can search for these and then you can see there's this one very famous for material one, which now using the Matt Talk uh, DB table a simplified table for material data and this is an interface where you can uh, you can just uh, check here the VDM type is mentioned as a basic this is a, a dimension type of CDS with the data category dimension which means exposing the master data and then it's further joining associating with other other uh, VDMs other data models uh, which are again CDS views essentially and all of them are type, type basic so this is how <clears throat> system has these uh, basic views or interface views defined uh, they can be also on uh, some fact tables but yeah the category is not just with the basic uh, VDM then on top of it you have a join with the master in the fact table which is in typical VW system you so called as a star schema so you would have them here probably one or more than uh, two or more than two views combining together and building a composite view and usually they have again of type interface only so i underscore but uh, the further type they, they mark it as a composite view the most important important thing here it's actually a join between master and the fact tables for example material and material order items yeah it's order items and material table master table the the another interesting fact about these are they are typically created of type q so when you're creating them, they are also marked as, though they are considered to be an interface, but they are created as of type Q. Now, what is a Q? Q is nothing but it's a star schema. It's a joint between the master and the transaction table. And that's how uh, they can also become uh, some initial, uh, they can also deliver some initial statistics or analytics for your cube, uh, cube applications. So on top of it, then we have finally the consumption CDS views, which are built on top of these uh, interface views and composite views. We have them as consumption views. Okay, so okay, sorry for typos. So this consumption views always they start with C underscore in S four system, yeah. and these consumption views are mainly for final consumption by the outside world outside world i mean to say not necessarily all the time outside s4 system but yeah at times you want to build a fury application or some kind of analytic tool would like to consume the data from s4 system for an analytic and charting purpose then you would uh, have finally so this is the vdm standard which we use typically so if i just quickly show you some some of my favorite consumption view which i use uh, for different purpose uh, just to do control alt uh, shift Control Shift P again, and I say see sales order uh, fulfillment or sales order volume analytic query, and I can just go inside. You would observe the the VDM annotation here is marked as consumption, yeah. And typically these are also exposed as an audit service, and these views are also marked as analytic query annotation as true because they will be readily, easily consumable by analytical tools. What are all those analytical tools? We'll see it in a second. Uh, finally, who are the consumers of these series? And you can see this view further uses uh, in another view. You can see here this building document item queue view, which is an interface view. And this interface view, the medium category is composite. Just beneath the analytical query or just beneath the consumption view, you typically find a composite view, which is of data category queue. This is what I was talking here. Uh, the middle layer the composite view again called as the interface but data category is marked as a queue for intermediate analytics and now coming to the consumption part what all the different consumption points we have for these views why we do all this development well, because basically we want to consume them so coming uh the first biggest consumer is s embedded analytics We'll create a separate video on s4 on embedded analytics and uh, you can always uh, drop the comments here i will give you the link also to that video if you want to uh, not miss this video please subscribe on this youtube channel hit the bell icon 
So the moment I, I upload that video, you will get notified so that you will not miss out these powerful videos which are published here on YouTube for free. The second uh, biggest consumer is the Fury application. If you ever create a custom Fury app, uh, which look alike standard Fury application. So if you have a, a gap in the fit to standard workshop, then you would want to create your own uh, uh, Fury elements. So then uh, you can go ahead with these uh, Fury apps. So basically there are three major categories, smart filter, PLP or the applications that you would like to create. And you have analytical tools uh, which you can use for consumption of the CDS, EDM. And then last, last but not least, you have then uh, also other consumers like UPF, uh, some frameworks, external frameworks. And there's also one more which we cannot definitely ignore. It's something for external integration. We have something called APIs exposed out of S4 system, which are also published publicly on API Hub. Uh, have you seen my video on what is API Hub? Please feel free to go back to my YouTube channel uh, with the name Anubhav Veroy. And I have a video here uh, on the API Hub where I've explained more details about what is API Hub, how can you integrate your S4 system with, uh, with, the, with the help of these APIs to an external system. So this is a very powerful video. If you have not seen this, I'm going to put a link for this video uh, into the description of this video. So you can go ahead and check that out. Yeah. So this will help you to understand. So that, that that's where also these, these VDM views are also very helpful to expose the APIs, which are whitelisted uh, contract stable APIs, which can be used to build side by side extensions in S4 and also for the purpose of integration uh, used, used heavily. So that's the whole structure of the views, the way we create them in S4 system and the consumptions. Of course, we have dedicated course about each of these things, be it S4 embedded analytics, be it building these views in on-premise system using ADT. So please feel free to go to our website, onlinefurytrainings.com, <clears throat> where we have dedicated course, especially the one which you must be interested or would like to learn is this ABAP on HANA Kam S4 HANA technical course with CDS views. This is where we learn how to build these CDS views from scratch as a layman person, as a first time developer, as a BW consultant or an ABAP consultant, you would want to learn the right practices, the best ways or the right uh, ways to develop the end to end uh, CDS views and then consume them in S4 system. This is the best course or this is the module you must subscribe immediately to to become an expert on s4 and then of course we have s4 on a cloud where we also consume the apis exposed out of cds views uh, which you would also be interested some of you who are working on s4 cloud would be interested for s4 on a cloud extension uh, another very powerful module so just look at the course content here and then decide which one would fit best to your need and then accordingly make a choice uh, yet uh, you need to stay motivated and stay connected uh, feel free to uh, drop your comments and challenges which you are facing in S4 system here in the chat window in the comment box below in the video and I would make sure that I would get you more content like this uh, on, on the YouTube. With that, Anubhav signing out. Thank you so much once again and thanks for watching and goodbye.